Two years ago, the Elgin Sports Hall of Fame Foundation initiated the Team Recognition Award. At that time, the hall had inductees, scholarship recipients, outstanding achievement awards, and legacy recognitions. It was felt that the missing piece was team recognition. Baby boomers and the generation before them, our community will recall that the previous night's games would always be reviewed and talked about. It'd be reviewed at barber shops, at the Tower Grill, the Star Sandwich Shop, Lazarus Pizza, or similar venues. Nowadays, we chat on social media, perhaps about individual players, but the prevailing discussions always came back to the talking about teams and comparing great teams. That is why it is important that this community recognize Elgin's teams. Tonight, we recognize two very deserving teams that brought enjoyment and pride to our community. Two teams that early on were aware of the dedication, grit, determination, and fighting through adversity, staying together to compete game after game, and most importantly, recognizing that achievement was their mantra rather than individual accomplishments. It is my pleasure to introduce those teams now. Two teams that have brought, for me, a lot of great pride and enjoyment. First up tonight, a group of guys, a lot of them I know going all the way back to kindergarten, the 1967 Larkin Royal, undefeated and highly ranked football team, fifth in the state and second in the Chicagoland area. Before we get into their accomplishments, I wish to recognize teammates who left us far too early and I was unable to attend with their teammates to celebrate tonight one more time. They are Jeff Korn, Brian Weiner, Larry Corbin, Mike Coffey, and assistant coach Angelo Barrow. <laughs> On their way to an undefeated season, they had to deal with all types of bad weather and field conditions. They played in rain, fog, mud, and even snow. Also during that season, little did I know at that time that a future Elgin Sports Hall of Famer would ride on the team bus home with her father. This team whose foundation was an impenetrable defense, one that achieved six shutouts, allowed only 27 points all season, and six, only six of them, one measly touchdown, were against the first team defense. It also included an outstanding offensive line aligned with barely anyone over 200 pounds that supported a balanced running attack. An offense that, however, may be one of the key game of the year via the past. It is my pleasure right now to introduce their head coach, Elgin Sports Hall of Fame 1992 inductee, Ray Haley. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a night that's going to go down in memory for my lifetime, I'm sure. Uh, we had a wonderful team in 1967. They weren't big, but they were determined and they were wonderful uh, on defense, and we shut out a lot of people. And uh, I always said that you win with good kids, good parents, good support, and uh, determination. And that's what that team had. I, I was very fortunate uh, to be uh, on the committee that started the Hall of Fame, I don't know, 38 years ago or something. And I couldn't be more proud of this organization than I am tonight. Uh, we, we just gave uh, two $500 scholarships the first two. And as you heard earlier, uh, next year it will be a half a billion dollars in scholarships to uh, individuals. That's a wonderful thing, and we've had great uh, leadership on the uh, Hall of Fame, and I hope that you'll all support it. I'm so proud tonight because I've been associated with uh, my daughter, who is a wonderful, wonderful girl. She, uh, she really uh, achieved most all of her things prior to Title IX, and that's not easy because 
At that time, you didn't keep statistics like you do on every kill in volleyball or every setup. Uh, back in those days, they uh, they played uh, around on GAA teams, and she went from there and got a scholarship of Eastern Illinois and was a great player for them. Went on and played uh, uh, professional ball with uh, different teams, and I couldn't be more proud of her. I'm also very proud of our 67 football team. I believe I've associated with at the conference from 1955 uh, up through 90. I coached 35 years. And I saw all the teams that were in that league, uh, the Big Eight, the Upstate Eight, and uh, the uh, River Conference type for the last few years. And I think this was the best football team that ever played in that league. And uh, I know there were, uh, the first year I coached, it was Don East Aurora. And East uh, uh, played uh, Elgin High School. Both of them were undefeated in the last game of the season. In 1955, Elgin beat East Aurora, Elgin High School. And in 1956, uh, they were both undefeated, and East Aurora beat uh, Elgin. They were two wonderful teams. And then I think around 1968, we got another undefeated team at uh, uh, Elgin High, and I saw them. But I really, I'm maybe prejudiced, but I think this is the best football team that's ever played in this league. And I'm very proud of them. We had a, a get-together last uh, Saturday out at uh, the pizza place out on Randall Road. And we had a about 25 people back. We've had kids from all over the country, uh, Oregon, California, a couple from, uh, from uh, Florida, Virginia, Texas. And I'll tell you, it was, I didn't recognize all of them after 50 years. <laughs> we all got a little older, I guess. But uh, we had such a wonderful time. And every one of them said they wouldn't have missed this coming back to this honor. And I'm very proud uh, of each and every one of them, and very proud of my daughter here who's going into Hall of Fame this year. Thank you, folks. Now, and now to introduce his teammates and talk about the season, I want to introduce Terry Whipple from the 67 team, who was an all-conference defensive back and also is uh, celebrating his 67th birthday today. Hi, I am Terry Whipple, but enough about me. Um, let's talk about the Larkin High uh, Royals 1967 football team, of which I was a member. I'm very much honored to be here at the Elgin Sports Hall of Fame dinner and very privileged to be able to talk about this football team. I thought about telling some stories about the team, but I'm afraid the statute of limitations hasn't run out on some of those events. So instead, let's talk about how this team follows some of the characteristics of all successful and special teams like the ones recognized in this Hall of Fame. Um, first of all, a special need, uh, team needs a successful system. One that works when you perform it correctly, is teachable to the point of mastery, is adaptable to changing situations and teams. We had one of the best, Ray Haley's. Ray, who you've heard is a member of this Hall of Fame and the Illinois Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame, probably adopted that system from somewhere, but after three years, that system was ours. Ray gave us structure, discipline, and turned teenage chaos into semi-predictable behavior. He had help from his cadre of coaches. They were assigned to teach skill level from fundamental to some level of proficiency. They were the translators of the system into real-time performance. We had Angie Barrow and Woody Burnell introduce the system and the fundamentals to sophomores. We had John Perry and Bill Burns turn the JVs into the other team for the varsity to scrimmage. And with Ray, Roger Smith, and another Elgin Sports Hall of Famer, Bill Hofstetter, tried to coerce command of this system by teenagers. Special teams also have and need enablers. Those people who prepare things, take things down, put them away, learn to tape an ankle, or treat blisters from ill-fitting shoes. 
Make the team work. Get from here to there. Our menagerie of managers and trainers were great. Donald Turner, Terry Reebok, Mike Pregnance, and a name you all are familiar with, Mark Scharf, who is still enabling great things today. Um, special teams have players who know their roles, master the skills, and look forward to the challenges and not shy away from tough situations like hot August double sessions. We were blessed. We had a clutch of centers to start the plays with a snap, fulfill their blocking assignments, and handle the long snap. Scott Halkey, all-conference, all-area, all-state, third-team All-American, and Elgin Sports Hall of Fame inductee. Brian Weiner and Jeff Johnson. Special teams have guards that can multitask, play block, pass block, pull and trap, plus feel that back on their hip on a sweep and know how to make a path. We had a gaggle of guards. Todd Christensen, all-conference, all-area, Tribune, all-state. Al Poltz, all-conference, special mention. Art Belke, Cliff Kramer, and Mike Cork, all-conference, all-area, and Tribune, all-state. Special teams are blessed with people, and in football, they're territorial creatures, like tackles. Those who like the brawl, ours was a troop of tackles. Mark Eshelman, all-conference, all-area, all-state. Herb Lynn, all-conference, all-area, and Tribune, all-state. Ron Chai, Vance Peters, Larry Burnell, and Richard Poocher, all-conference, all-area, and Tribune, all-state. Lastly, the line needed those special bookends, called ends, that have the ability to block without losing the ability to catch a football. Our catch-all of ends was John Fender, all-conference special mention, Jim Balgi, all-conference special mention, Cliff Fox, Jeff Korn, Greg Bryant, and Steve Burn, Burris. Special football teams also have to have special backfields. Ours was no exception. But usually you think of undefeated teams being led by a seasoned senior who knows the system and has matured into a quality skill level. We had a junior fill our quarterback position and all those qualifications. He was unanimous all-conference, number three in conference passing yards with six touchdown passes and was a Courier News Player of the Week, Todd Kruger. We also had a quiver of those to back him up, Dave McDonald and me. We had a bevy of running backs that helped to create an offense that scored over 22 points in a game five of the nine times we played. We had the most first downs in the conference, plus we're leading rushing team and leading total offense. Plus, we outscored our opponents 190 to 27. Mike Jacob was our captain, all-conference, all-area, Tribune All-State, Courier News Player of the Week, who averaged 4.6 yards per carry on 111 team-leading carries for the season. Larry Corbin, special mention all-conference. Lyle Wolf, honorable mention all-conference. Mike Coffey, a multi-talented sophomore who averaged 4.95 yards per carry and honorable mention all-conference. Larry Kathalinas, everybody wanted to be a back. Ken Kunselman, Ron Moody, Al Buey, Bob Geraltz, Bob Schombach, Dan Rowing, Ken Smeltzer, and Kurt Whipple, an inductee in this Elgin Sports Hall of Fame. The Royals 67 football team was also special on defense, a must. As you've heard, you can't lose if the opponent doesn't score, and six of the nine games were shutouts. We also led the conference in the least yardage allowed. We had a colony of folks in the center who adopted turf and never gave it back. Scott Hulke, who not only led the team in tackles, but had a pass interception from the point guard position. Todd Christensen, also a Courier News Player of the Week. Mike Cork, number two in tackles. Brian Weiner, Al Poltz, and Art Belke. Special teams need to practice containment. Nothing gets outside. And we had a pride of players that work seriously at containing on the outside. We used defensive tackle, defensive end, and cornerback to do all that turning in, plus some extracurricular activities like Herb Lynn scoring a safety on a, punt, a block punt. The rest of the pride were Mark Eshelman, Richard Poocher, Jim Balgi, Dan Rowing, Bob Schombach, Ron Scheid, Larry Burnell, Ken Smeltzer, Greg Bryant, Cliff Fox, Larry Kathleenis, and me. 
Special teams need special safeties to be exceptional, and those blessed with speed, the ability to tackle in the open field where coaches can see every mistake or lapse of heart. And there's always some innate ability to always be aware of the wall, where the ball might be. Plus, return a kick or two, like a 58-yard punt return by Dave McDonald, and a 58 and 40-yard punt returns for touchdowns by Kurt Whipple. Our other swarm of safeties was Mike Jacob, Ron Moody, Bob Geralds, Al Buey, Ken Councilman, and Larry Kathleenis when Larry wasn't being called on to do something else for the team. Special teams have specialists, and we had two great ones. We needed a consistent place kicker who was reliable even in some of the nastiest weather Northern Illinois could drum up, like coaches out shoveling snow off the yard lines. Ours was junior Cliff Kramer, who used a square-toed shoe to hit 20 of 27 extra points and two of four field goals. We won one game, three to nothing. Also needed was a special punter, and when I say special, that's the perfect word that applies. Al Buey made punting look easy, but it wasn't easy to punt out of the positions we put him in, nor the weather in which he had to apply that trade. But Naperville's coach, Wes Spencer, he said it in a way I just can't. Quote, I don't think there's any question the kicker beat us. He is the best punter I have ever seen in high school, unquote. Lastly, special teams need the infrastructure that upholds and supports them. Supportive administration and faculty, cheerleaders and fans, both students and community, plus parents that provide all those intangible things that make high school teams special. We had all that and more. We had something only fate can give you, quality opponents. We played several teams that were talented enough that when we beat them, we got lots of recognition, including our great crosstown rival Elgin High. The LHS Royal 67 football team was indeed special. We were a high school program only in its fifth year. We were the first undefeated LHS football team, and it's my understanding we're the only undefeated football team in the entire Elgin area for quite a while. We were the school's first upstate eight conference champions, first of many for Ray. And we were noted in the polls because there were no playoffs then, and by the end of the year, we're ranked fifth in the state. So this team has much to be appreciative for. I want to express our utter thanks to the Elgin Sports Hall of Fame for this honor, and especially those that advocated for the team recognition. Thanks to all who worked so hard for this reception dinner, and all the work that goes into recognizing Elgin's wonderful and talented athletes and coaches like those here tonight. I may be biased, but Elgin was a great place for a kid who loved sports to grow up. Many things have to happen to create special teams and athletes, and Elgin created an environment where that could happen. And if you look around the Hall of Fame, it happens a lot. But on this 50-year anniversary of our winning season, this team would like to express extreme thanks to Ray Haley and his coaching staff for corral corralling this talented team chaos into a very special football team. Thanks. And if you would indulge me one more minute, I'd like to echo um, the mention of a choir of those who are not here as they've passed on from this world, Larry Corbin, Jeff Korn, Mike Coffey, Brian Weiner, and Angie Barrow. Thank you. God bless.